Welcome to the Thursday live teams special on Blue Abroad. I'm Terry. You should be able to see Dan shortly. Uh, I'll be bringing him in now. Um, looking forward to this episode. There he is. Hello, mate. You're right. How are we doing? Very good, mate. And yourself? Ah, oh, you know, just cruisy Thursday, one day away from the weekend. Yes, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. How is uh, how is the build up for this game been for you? I'm super excited, you know. Crows, you know, maybe a chance to ruin their eight aspirations, make that draft pick look a bit better. Yeah, there's a, a lot, lot riding on this game. It's going to be quite fun, I think. Yeah, there's a lot to it, and you know, it's it's just good to get to round eighteen and have you know kind of something to play for you know we've got a we've got something to build towards for the future we're not just um looking ahead you know just sort of waiting for the season to end because it's been such a disaster year so i think that's uh, refreshing yeah usually at this stage you're looking at the bbl fixtures aren't you so seeing what seeing when the mighty melbourne stars are playing <laughs> hello everyone who's joining us stefan good to have you on mate John Stanford, good to have you on. Um, as we get people filing in, uh, we might just start off at the top of the show. Dan, you've got some news for us, mate. Yeah, the uh, the, the Pom Monkeys have been flying around. Um, I'm hearing strong suggestions that Cruiser is out, Phillips is in. But don't fear, boys. I'm hearing the Chos Dog will be... Uh, back leading the line for the Carlton Blues. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so, yeah, just to repeat that, hearing very strong rumours that Cruiser will miss this game and that Phillips will come in. Uh, it was disappointing. Cruiser was a easy. I mean, he's always bruised and battered this time of year. I think every, you know, every year he has something um, that sort of breaks down with him. He's just, you know, ever since he did the first knee, it just seems to have been... One of those things where it just continues to, to just happen for him. So hopefully it's nothing too serious. But again, we these are just rumours. They might name him and there might be a late out. But, uh, you know, usually where there's smoke, there's fire, mate. Oh, I, I'm, Cruiser's held together by Arrow Day, isn't he? So he, he's going to go down. But, I mean, Phillips has been fairly steady in the uh, Magoos and it, he did all right in the first three rounds. So it, we won last week without Cruiser, didn't we? So yeah, Wits Wits gave him a bath. So probably good for him. Take the day off. Yeah, fair enough. Hey Carmelo, how are you? Deconning. Don't think he's quite ready to just play just yet. He, um, I, I mean, he's only had a few games in now. Um, so I, I don't think if you know if Cruiser was to miss, and we're going to find out in twenty minutes or so. Uh, if Cruiser was to miss, I don't think De Conning's just quite yet ready to to just leap over Phillips and, and be selected. So um, take that as you will. Um, for those I of think the good news is he's going to be first choice Ruckman in the Magoos, which <laughs> at the moment he's just messing around pinch hitting. So that's huge for De Conning, I think. Gets yeah. a full game at Ruck. Yeah, that's the thing. Spoke about it during the week. When he does go to the twos, he, yeah, he doesn't quite play the the same role uh, that he would um, play in the ones. And, and that's the thing. If, if he can't be a third string Ruckman um, and then just come in and, and play a full game in the Ruck, I understand Levi can pinch hit, and but really he's only doing, um, he's only doing the, um, you know, the, the pinch hitting, you know, five or six minute spells in there. So you want someone who you can go in with the game, especially a big one, big one like this. Uh, you want someone that can go in and play a, a good chunk of the game without having to worry about whether or not he's going to survive for the game. Oh, definitely. I mean, De Koning's going to be, we're going to have plenty of chances to see him in the next couple of years when he's our first choice and he's doing his Brody Gun Grundy impression. So let's just wait. Let's keep that one on ice. Something to look forward to. Absolutely. De Koning is coming along nicely. Todd Smith, Malthouse coach. Um, I want to touch on this. I think it's a pretty good topic. Uh, for those of you who haven't listened to the podcast, uh, it's a new one. It's called Sacked. Uh, they've got three episodes, I believe, one with Malthouse, one with uh, Grant Thomas, and one with Guy McKenna. I had to listen to the Malthouse one. It's 
it's in two parts and the first part was obviously about his Collingwood experience um you know it's a ve- it was very insightful what happens on the inside it goes through the whole process of of you know the succession plan and I'm not sure when the Carlton version will be available but Dan I I dare say that when the Carlton version becomes available there'll be the usual Carlton outrage. Uh, we'll find something to um, get excited about and talk about. There'll be some sort of headline, so stay tuned for that because that'll come out in the next week or so, I think. Just imagine if Malthouse was the Carlton coach again. Just imagine it. In a funny way, I kind of hope I see it a little article, like a little, even if it's clickbait, just Malthouse meets with Kane Little just for coffee. Oh. If I was Kane Little, if I was the president of Carlton Football Club, I would get him into an interview purely for the reaction on the forums. I oh, would do. That. I think. Uh, I think. I think Facebook would blow up. Got a few people joining us. Uh, thank you for your time, Robbie. Hello, mate. G'day, lads. What's your thoughts on Gov coming back and ride the smasher old side horse? I think he deserves to be punished. I think he deserves to miss this game. Um, I think it'll fuel the fire for him because there's no doubt he'd want to play against his old mob. And in a in a way, I'd, I'd like to see him miss this game and I think he will miss this game. I think he's got that type of character where he will remember it, it'll burn him, it'll hurt him and he'll come back for it better next time and be ready. What do you think, Dan? Oh, I, I've been the biggest critic of Mitch McGovern, so I really hope he goes into the twos and I want to see seven, eight games from him just really smashing it proving me wrong and i think it'll hurt him the most like you say missing the crows because he moved in a bad way over here so keep him hungry just to remind everyone he did have a fractured back which set him back i mean he did it over christmas the, the week before christmas so he's had a good seven weeks off he's already a big guy as it is he's already not the most aesthetic guy as it is so he's he was playing behind he was playing catch up really the whole year and you know the players talk about it all the time just makes a difference when you get a preseason into you um so do want to cut in some slack but yeah look if he doesn't come back next season and uh, and perform uh then there, there will be a bit more criticism coming his way if you've got a bad back as well if you've ever been to the drive through and got one of them family boxes from mcdonald's they are a bit hard to get through the window so <laughs> banter lad it's best robert winstone <laughs> hello mate uh is dan williams the statistical comparison to judd oh i reckon you're probably selling dan a little short there i think um I don't I don't know if, a compliment or an insult i don't know if um i don't know if juddy has quite the statistical acumen that dan shows from a week to week but yet yeah, uh, nevertheless we'll take that I've got mate. My hair. That's right. That's right. You're like Chris Judd, 2000 and circa 2004. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've got the supermodel wife. Yeah, that's <laughs> no. Zoe's a superstar. Damien, <laughs> hey, Jens, Stefan. If they resign, Malt, if resign, Malt House, I'm finished. Let's just make put this. Let's just make it clear. All banter aside, he won't be at Carlton. There'll be no meeting. There'll be nothing. We can rest. Be rest assured that Malt House will not be at the club next year or any other year there'll be no coaching director role nothing like that um i think it's just just a little bit of banter to think about what would happen if if they did uh, actually meet with him so uh I think you've got more chance of whitnell starting in the rock tomorrow than you have of mo house playing so yeah absolutely john t hello mate how are you i think we should keep teague i'm with you mate uh last week yeah, was the- did it for me if we win this week i'll probably just if the contract probably just signs itself if we uh, win this week and we win well. Um, so we'll see about that. Ashley Thrum. Hello, Ashley. Good to have you on. Cunners, is he playing this week? I don't think so. We don't think, we don't know. Northern Northern Blues. I, I'm told Dowand Connors, Northern Blues. Yep. Dowand Connors, and Northern. And that, that's good for them. Connors has missed, correct me if I'm wrong, it's at least three weeks, maybe four. Yeah, he's been out for a while, hasn't he? Yeah, so I mean, that it's probably worth going to go and see the Magoo's game because it's going to be like an all star cast, I think. So, yeah, absolutely. Tony, good evening, gents. Love your work. And I need to say this if anyone mentions Malthouse 
or Voss to coach the Blues needs a cold fish in the face. Love it, mate. <laughs> I've um, I've been uh, I've been a bit of an advocate for Michael Voss myself. I just think he's a champion of the game. He's he's a winner. Yes, it didn't work at Brisbane. Yes, it didn't. I mean, you can't say it hasn't worked at Port. I mean, you want to apportion blame to him. I don't know, but. Um, yeah, that was seven years ago, eight years ago when he was at the Lions. Um, I just feel like he's ready for another crack at it. Whether that's with Carlton or not, I don't know. I would be very surprised if Michael Voss was not a senior coach next year somewhere. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm not – I don't hate him for no reason like most of us uh, seem to, but we'll see. Jazza. Jazza would Jazza, – first of all, hello, Jazza. Long time no speak. Uh, Jazza would stop barracking for Carlton. That's, that's a lie. Huge. That's that huge. Last. <laughs> no, no, I, I, yeah, I don't think um, I don't think Malthouse will be anywhere near our club. Um, Stefan, Stefan, Rats or Teague boys only options. Yeah, I mean, seems that way. It just seems like it's Teague's job to lose, really. And how how, how amazing is that? Yeah, uh, Rat Ratton will be at Zoe's club, St Kilda, I reckon next year. Yeah. Peter Vlahos, hello, mate. They should have a podcast for rats as well. You'll see a flare-up. Yes, they should, mate. Josh Ferguson, hello. How are you? Good to have you on. Maddie Hagen, reckon we'll redraft Dylan Buckley by the rookie draft. Um, I wouldn't have thought so, personally. Uh, I don't know I don't know where how he's travelling, to be honest. He hasn't really – he hasn't had a game for the Giants in a while. Dan? Any, anything on Dylan Buckley? Not really, no. I mean, he's, he's podcast worth a listen to, though. Definitely, yep. Great Definitely. effort. If you're hearing yeah. box. Did you um did you have a listen to his podcast with Crips and Doherty, like early in the year or maybe even yeah. late last year? Yeah, I've got to say, he's got a career in the media, hasn't he, Bockers? Because yeah. it, it, he's, he's entertaining. So, yeah, I like him. Yep, absolutely. He's Stefan, and he lots of questionable moments. Yep, for sure. G'day, guys, from Drew. Governator has got an ankle problems as well. And what have you been on, Dan? Um, the hate for Mitch McGovern. It's uh, it's coming back to bite you, mate. <laughs> I've, I've been consistent, huh? I, I, ever since he was drafted, so, well, traded. Fair enough. Simon Kerbin, hello. <laughs> Good to have you on site, Simon. Nick Webb, McGovern came to us on 700K plus, not getting any outs from me. Yeah, fair enough, mate. You get paid that much. You, It's the same thing. If I'm an Arsenal fan and, you know, we have the same problem with – well, not a problem, but issue with Mesut Ozil, his highest paid player, stupid amount of money, £350,000 a week, doesn't quite perform. So, And that comes with the territory. So, yeah, welcome to professional sports. That's the way it goes. Damien, no multi <laughs> We, as Dan once said, you never go back to your ex-girlfriend. You never get back in bed with your ex. It's a good point. It's a good point. There was a disclaimer for that. Only if you've got no money for a taxi. Remember that. It's acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Josh Ferguson, Stocker, another VFL game. Yes, I can. I saw him play last week in the VFL. He played, would have been lucky to be 60%. He didn't play at all in the first quarter. So being managed in, he'll come back into the side for sure because from what I saw, he he's a level above. He's a class above. He's tough. He's tenacious. Um, give him, I don't know, two, three, maybe, yeah, maybe three weeks in the VFL this week and next week. And then, um, you know, towards the end of the season, we'll see who's feeling sore and whatnot. And I think he'll come back into the side for sure. What do you think, Dan? Oh, massive fan of Stocker. Love the guy. Clean, tough. In two years' time, he's going to be one hell of a footballer. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Peter Vlahos, breaking news. If Malthouse ever gets the gig, then Judd, Julia Gillard is the Bulldogs' new full forward. <laughs> Very nice, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Everyone's We're on fire. Hey. We are coming up to teams. They should be landing um, any minute, really. Uh, they should be landing in about four or five minutes. So... Just keep an eye out for them. I'll have, if anyone gets them before me here, just feel free to let us know. But we think, we think Matt Cruiser will come out for Andrew Phillips. Strong suggestions that Cruiser's a little sore. 
hasn't quite been able to get through the full sessions this week uh, and therefore they've pulled him aside and they've just told him to rest up for this week. So um, let's stay tuned for that. Uh, do you have any other team selection suggestions? Let us know in the comments and we'll go from there. I'm adding another Carltonian, another regular guest here. Kano, how are you, mate? How are you? Good, how are you, man? Going well, mate. Going well. How is everything going in your world? Everything's going good. I see. Yep. Fantastic. What do you think will be the the ins and the outs, mate? Well, I would I would honestly like to see the team unchanged. And actually, matter of fact, I was just thinking before I came on, and I would like to know um, if anyone knows um, the last time we were unchanged. Good question. Good question. I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, I think if Cruiser was fit, we'd probably go in unchanged this week. But he's yeah. just he's just not feeling well. So yeah, let us know what you think. Let us know what you think about this new banner. I just made it. Um, but it, there needs we need three people on the banner so we can actually see all the writing oh, in there. No, yeah. that's very <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. Uh, yeah. So for those of you. We've got a Facebook page, obviously. You're on it now. Um, we are also on Instagram and YouTube as well. Uh, lots more content uh, over there. If you just can't get enough of Carlton throughout the week, uh, please <laughs> join us over there like us sickos. Let's get it through through a few more questions here um, uh, before the teams come out. Brendan, a, se a second Carlton podcast during the week. Nice. Does Johnny and Trev jump on this? I actually haven't seen John or Trev on, on any of our lives yet, so hopefully one day we get them on. But, um, yeah, Brendan, welcome. Uh, this Yeah, this goes on every week. Uh, Thursday team selection, definitely, and sort of we play it by ear from there. Okay. Welcome to you. Ashley, would you lads take team and rack as a team next year? Powers it he might make this impossible, but I like the idea. Um, I personally wouldn't. I think you just choose one. Um, I think if Rats was to be head coach, Teague would probably accept it and, and be an assistant for sure. I don't know if it would, it would happen the other way around. So I'm assuming you're meaning Rats as coach, Teague as assistant there. A um, few more people are coming in. Nicolas Topelos, good morning, Blue Boys. Where are you messaging from, Nicolas? For some reason, I feel like you're in Spain. I think that was last week. I could be mistaken there. Jackson, hello to you. Would you guys like Baker? If so, what price? Yeah, we've said this on, on Blue Abroad for about a month now. Baker, strong mail that he will be a Carlton player in 2020. Um, and, yes, yeah. I would like him. Dan, what, is it, what does it take to get Liam Baker to the club? Yeah, well, he's, he's, he'd be free. So, whatever, I, I'd say he'd come mm. for, what, like 500K? Mm. Would you like Liam Baker, Kano? Yes, well, we need a small forward, don't we? So, Yep, that we do. Just got a few more comments here about Liam Baker. Just to repeat that, it's very, very strong mail. That there's a verbal agreement with the Blues and Liam Baker. I mean, obviously nothing's in concrete until we read it on the Carlton website, but, you know, the whispers that we're hearing on this end, um, mm. we wouldn't be putting them here if we didn't think they were strong. Um, we're not a, uh, a lock um, prediction type community over here. So um, be that as it may. Craig, we were, mate. What's that? We were. I said, I wish we were. <laughs> no, no, we don't do uh, – <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Craig, give Teague a year and see what happens against the good sides when they are fit and firing, wary in the year. Uh, yeah, wearing the year. Timing is everything. I feel he's had some great luck with beating teams in their down games thoughts. Um, no, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Um, we played Freo at home. We played at their home. We played Sydney at their home. Um, we got Melbourne. I mean, they played pretty well against us. The Doggies, all right, they're probably not playing as well as they were now. They still beat us. But, um, yeah, I think if we deserve to lose when we deserve to lose, then I think we deserve to win when we have. And I, I, don't, th I don't feel like I've you know, left any of the games that we've won and sort of said, oh, gee, we got lucky. Um, what do you think, Kano? Yeah, no, I agree, actually. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 
Tony, Terry, you support Arsenal and all this time. I thought you were a top bloke. Go Chelsea Blues. Go Carton Blues. Ah, uh, mate. Uh, can't have that. Uh, nice Europa League win. Well done. I'll give you that. But, yeah, no, I'm an Arsenal boy, unfortunately. can imagine what that's been like for the last three years. Carlton and Arsenal, it's been nothing but uh, disappointment. Yeah. Jeff Gay, hello to you, mate. Generally, the bad teams get worse as well. The growth in the last few weeks has been terrific. Yes, Dan. Teams are in. Cruiser out in in Phillips. And um, that's the only change. And that's no it. bats. And no what? Eddie Bats. He's not in. They've dropped Alex Keane. Eddie Bats. Hugh Greenwood. Give us the four points now. Thanks very much. Okay. So just to recap that, as we, as we suggested, Cruiser is out. Phillips is in, the only change for the Blues. And Keith and Eddie Betts are out for Greenwood. Greenwood, and who's the other one coming in? So Hugh Greenwood, Betts, and Keith are out. Oh, all three are out. Mm. <laughs> Shall we just do, do the review show now? Calton win by 30. Mate, two wins in a row with the Carlton Arrogance is back. Jeez. And, and Andy Otten, Patrick Wilson, and Tyson Stengel are the replacements. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Love it. Love it. There you go. So, yeah. Interesting, guys. Uh, obviously, themes coming out of that. Um, you know, Cruz is obviously a little banged up. DeLuca gets another run at it, which we're really excited about. Yeah. We're of his we love his attack on the footy i probably want to see a little bit more of him as a midfielder to be honest and i think naturally when you come into a club and you know you, you play the role that he plays you're asked to be you know a pressure forward very much like what gibbons was just to get a feel for it but i feel like naturally he's a midfielder right so i feel like naturally eventually once we start trusting him he'll get a few more minutes in there what do you think dan oh definitely i mean i think uh we it's it's made the job a bit easier as well to give him a chance in the midfield now as well. I think so. Yeah. With, with the matchups, I mean, I'm I'm hearing Greenwood requested to uh, be omitted for this game because he's signed for Cowan. That's wishful, <laughs> thinking. That's wishful thinking. We'd love it. We'd love it. Matty Hagen, who do you think will be delisted at the end of the season? Um, Let's put that on hold. That's going to be that's going to be a video that um, Dan and I will do for sure. Um, we've we've had a few chats about it throughout the last few weeks. Um, maybe let's all just give one if we had to. I mean, we don't want to bring a a negative vibe to the show. Obviously, we want to be supporters and and not, and whatnot. But at the same time, we want to you know have our have our voices heard. So, Kano, is there any one person that you think will definitely be delisted? All right, good chat, Kano. Dan, what about you, mate? Uh, Matthew Lobby, I think he'll go. Okay. Lucas, you reckon De Conning plays over Phillips? No, nah, no. Nah. So De Conning, just, just to clear that up with you, Lucas. Now, De Conning, he's just not quite ready to take that number one ruck mantle just yet from Phillips. He's just back from injury. He's getting fit again. He's getting back you know, to his touch. And I don't think he's at a point where... Especially, it, it's not like the season's completely dead for us. We've got something to play for, particularly against Adelaide. So bringing him in, I don't know if you can trust him to just play out a full game and, and, and that kind of thing. I, I'm happy for him to play for another week. So Phillips is the right one for me. He's good in the air. Um, maybe we'll do a video about it tomorrow, Dan. But what are some of the strengths that Phillips brings? Well, I think Phillips is the most physical Ruckman we've got if there's no cruiser. And Riley O'Brien, for a young Ruckman, has really bullied most senior Ruckman. I, I, I would have liked to have seen De Koenig. I just think the only thing that's gone against De Koenig is he's just not rucking full-time in the VFL. Yeah. I think it would be a perfect game. Young Ruckman versus young Ruckman, prove where you belong. But our Ruck stocks are very thin when cruiser goes. Mm -hmm. And Cruiser did get dominated by Wits, who has been dominated this year by smaller Ruckman. He, he, Rowan Marshall gave him a bath when they played. So I, I'd rather 
Phillips is the best of the next, I think. Yep. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Adrian, hello from Cruise Ship in Italy. Mate, acknowledgement to you. Look at you getting on board, having a listen. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying your time. Whereabouts in Italy are you going? Where are you staying? Tell us a little bit more about it. Um, but that is what Blue Abroad's all about. Um, there are, I speak to a few people, you know, and they kind of they come to say, well, what are you going to do now, now that you're home? Like, you're not Blue Abroad anymore. So let's just clear that up. We've got 700,000 fans out of football worldwide we are a global brand whether you look at it that way or not that's where we're going towards and all abroad is all about having everyone around the world it's a Carlton fan um come together so all abroad is not just me it's it's dan it's kano it's everyone here so um just to clear that up we'll keep it as blue abroad and start opening up your mind uh there are Carlton supporters not just in australia yeah jazza put the truck in the shed all the services and oil change. <laughs> Love it, mate. <laughs> That's brilliant. Kane, I'm going to bring you back on, mate, just one moment. Um, I'm just catching up to the comments. TDK not being ready is the biggest load of BS. He is our future and a huge chance to become one of the best truckmen the Blues will ever have. Put TDK in ASAP. T Tony is just not ready. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying this to... Um, to, to badmouth the kid, he's just not ready yet to play in terms of he's not fit enough to play a full game yet. Uh, he's still working his way back from his injury. You've got to remember he's out for, oh, what was it, seven weeks? So, and he's playing in the VFL in, in a competition where everyone around him has um, continued to play games. And when you're a ruckman and a big boy as well, it takes a little bit more time to get fit. So, um, yeah, just... Him, mate. He's coming along nicely, but he's, he's not ready to play AFL this week in a game that we have to win. So, yes, I'll leave it at that. Jeffrey O'Day, wow, back to Blues as an assistant coach, mentor, Indigenous. Boys. I wouldn't mind that. What do you think? Do you have any bets? Uh, I'd have Eddie in some kind of player development role tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. I love Eddie. He keeps staying. That's the reason he started his books and things. He wants to give back to the younger generation. Excellent role model, Eddie Betts is. Fantastic. Yeah, I'd have him back in a heartbeat. Tell you what, if we can, um, if David T can get the Charlie Cameron deal across, we can have Eddie and Charlie back in the uh, team. And wouldn't that be something? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, let's give us the floor now. Robbie, gents, after the Sydney game. I wanted Langlock after the Gold Coast game. I'm thinking we can never leave him out. It seems we're persisting with Lang over for Solo. How do you see this playing out? Um, I don't see them being uh, one I like for like personally. I see Lang as someone you definitely want to persist with. I mean, the reality of his situation is he's out of contract. So the beauty of what we're in at the moment is there are guys out of contract who you've got a platform now. You've got five, six weeks to show yourself some worth um, and you might earn yourself another deal. And with that comes, it's a pretty good situation to be in because you have people that just have to perform or they won't have a gig next year. So I'm happy for Lang to stay in. He's got to play well this year, really consolidate last week and the week before, but that's just me. Kano, what do you think about Darcy Lang? Okay. Dan, what do you think about Darcy Lang? <laughs> I've always been a bit of a fan of Darcy Lang. We know that it's one of me. I loved him at Geelong. Um, I'd rather him be on our list than for Solo. For Solo kind of lost me second chance and Australia Day went out. And I've never heard a full grown man wrestle before. I didn't think that was a thing. Yep. No, fair enough, mate. So I mean, enough. I'd rather man. Jackson Tierney, will, would we need to trade him, wouldn't we? Uh, I think you're talking about Baker. I'm not sure about that. Stefan, hello. Yeah. I'm, pro I'm pretty behind on these comments. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed through them a little bit. Shad Watson, what are the chances of Hawks getting into the eight? Just asking because if they get in, I lose a bet and I have to ride my motorbike in my jocks. Um, well, Clarko knows that relevant. What do you think, Dan? Bats. Um, um, oh, Hawthorne. 
for his sake, I hope they don't. I don't think they will. I think they'll threaten, but no. Yep. Ashley Thrum, do you guys think Vsauce will get a game this year? I don't. I think he's just a, about a year away from even debuting. He's still he's very raw. He's got a lot of um he's got a lot of raw potential and he's just there's no rush with him. He's a project player. So I don't think he'll play this year. Dan. I think it's tough to get a game ahead of Jones and Wheater in at the moment, and they're in very, very good form. Very good form. Yep. Heath Buck, hello, mate. Good to have you on. Every time Phillips has played this year, he's op the opposition ruckman uh, has best on ground by quite some way. Nan Curvis and Lysette spring to mind. Cruiser out is a huge. He's always a big out. He's a, he's a heart and soul player. Puts those blocks on for the mids. He opens it up. We're definitely a different side. I don't know about my 32-point win prediction now that Cruz is not in the side. Not as confident about that. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. You've got to roll with who you roll with. Um, we have to be able to be a team that is a little bit like the Hawks, uh, you know, one man in, one man out. Um, obviously, Cruz is different. He just provides so much. He's so valuable to us, you know, sort of intrinsic value as well that he has. He's, a, he's a, uh, an emotional player. So... Yeah, it's going to be interesting, but hopefully, I mean, the thing with Phillips again, another one out of contract. So here, mate, he's a couple. He's a game late in the season. Try and cement your spot. The opportunity's there for you. Drew Bakes, Greenwood to the Blues. Dan heard from Adelaide supporters. I would love Hugh Greenwood at the Blues. Uh, I think Dan would as well. Dan, just give us a recap about Hugh Greenwood and and what he would bring to us. Hi, oh, he's. He, he's close to, we know Cornelio's our dream, two-way midfielder, they're very rare. Hugh Greenwood is probably like your $2 shot version of Stephen Cornelio. Real solid footballer, forward and back, gets goals, which is a commodity in AFL football, a goal kick in mid, we don't have one. Yeah. Good call. Um, Drew, how about we use Cruiser as a midfielder with Cripper and Phillips or Lobie as a ruck? What do you think? I personally think we'd leave us way too top heavy. Um, Dan, what do you think? We know I don't like tall players. It's a big thing with me. Um, so for me, we only play one ruckman at a time. Casbolt's doing fairly well as the pinch hitter. He actually had a higher success rate against Wits than Cruiser did. So is that right? Yeah. Jazza Blake is asking, who are our emergencies? They are. Um, they Lobby. Are Lob, Go. McCready, and someone else who's irrelevant in my mind. The solo. That's the one. The solo. Mehmet, how are you, mate? Good to have you on. We need to win the clearances, shut down both the Crouch boys. We need Crips and Co, I guess, to have a ripper. Yeah, we do. Crips has got to stand up in this one. He was really sore last week. Gosh, can I just say, seeing him limp the way he limped, I mean, I know he's a warrior and I know he's strong and I know he's courageous and I know he's our captain and I know it's an important game, but, you know, it's just hard to imagine what would happen if we, you know, mismanaged him and touch wood he was to really put a serious injury together. And so I just hope he's really okay and not being stupid about it. If Mehmet tunes in tomorrow, there is a video that we're doing, you don't know yet, but dedicated on the Crouch Brothers, the, the best combination of the comp at the moment. Love it, mate. Love it. Tony's have some really nice words. Blue Abroad is by far the best blue stream on the Facebook, hands down. You guys keep up the fantastic work. Thank you very much, mate. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Well, like we always say, you know, the idea of this was to just to be a platform for everyone to come and have their voices heard and... I think we're missing something in the the footy community with fan channels, and it's just something I think that's going to be um, more prevalent as we as we go on. Um, you know, we can be a little bit filtered with toxicity and a little bit of uh, negativity in some of the forums and, and the groups. So why not put everyone on, on camera and why not bring some some real discussion to the table? And that's what it's all about. Have your say. Be respectful. Bring some bring some fact. Bring some logic. And, and it's an amazing what happens and building a nice community here, but make sure you also check out Carlton Live. Trevor and John have been doing this for years. Um, great blokes. Uh, the Blueprint is also doing some really cool things there. WA Blue also. 
um, you know, fan run podcast and channels. So I'm um, sorry if I've missed anyone else there as well, but they're the sort of the, the prominent ones that I'm thinking of. Um, I like so, he fucks. I really like he fuck. Sorry, my bad. I, how can I forget Heath Buck? Yes, my blue heaven on YouTube. Um, Bucky does a great job as well. He gets a real, some real solid insight as well. I think he's got that industry experience that you know no one else really does have, and he brings that to the table. So, um, yeah, make sure you check out the community, guys. Best music in the game, Heath Buck as well. Love his intro. Yes, it does get uh, it does get quite the rap. Absolutely. Kano with the Dodo Network Wi-Fi, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Vlahos, DeLuca versus Laird, watch this space. That's not a bad idea. It's my favourite Carlton player at the moment versus my favourite non-Carlton player. It's a tough matchup. I like that, it, though. That's, uh, well, DeLuca's a tough little bugger. Um, and Laird is obviously an accumulator. That, that's not, it's not a bad one there, Peter Vlahos. I don't mind that. Flynn Salvini, to Conning, you so unlucky to miss. I'd rather see him for sure. I don't think he's unlucky. Flynn, we've got plenty of time. We have 10 or 11, maybe 12 years ahead of Tom De Conning. Don't rush him. He's coming back off injury. He needs a good month, maybe five weeks of solid performances, um, you know, just to get his fitness up. We don't want him to break down again. He's so important to our future. Um, but, yes, eventually I think he will be our number one ruckman, no doubt about that. Albert Ferrigno, De Luca, how do you think he went? I thought he was okay for his first game. I thought he was tough. I thought he, he played with the spirit that we would want him to play with. Dan, what do you think about De Luca? I don't think you like him. I thought he was easily best on. <laughs> no, I thought he was really good. I, I enjoyed his lines. He, he, the, his running patterns were immense. Just uh, mistimed a few of them jumps, but... Everything you expect, tenacious, hungry, and it's great to have an Italian playing in the pocket, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Jazza, the Carlton Show. Yes, the Carlton Show, uh, very prominent. I was more referring to the fan channels, um, though. Mehmet will definitely tune into the Crouch Boys video. Well done, boys. Thank you, mate. Heath Buck, Kerno on Sloan or Brody Smith? Smith is in cracking form and has gone into the midfield, penetrating and damaging to stop him. I should probably, I thought I did this before, but if anyone wants to join the stream, don't be shy. Love to have you on. I've just put the link in. Just make sure you've got a webcam um, and you'll be sweet to go on there. Um, good question. Dan, I'll let you take this one away. Kurno on Sloan or Brody Smith? There's... Or someone else. I, I... I'd say the way to stop them is you watch Essendon. Essendon managed to stop one of the Crouches in the third, fourth quarter. Uh, Matty Crouch was killing them, and they really clamped down on him. They traditionally, if you look at them, they are the they have got the highest disposal efficiency in the comp, and they're the quickest to transition off half back to midfield. So your real danger areas there are exactly your Brody Smith, um, Matt Crouch, and Jed. If you can stop them three. You pretty much stop Adelaide. So I'd probably send Kerner to Matt Crouch. I'd try and get it, stop him getting that easy ball out. But Brody Smith, he's exactly right. He's He can turn a game on a sixpence recently. Yep, that's a good call. It's a good call. What do you think uh, out there? Simon Schuster, Kerner's still injured. I would suggest Kerner's plays in the VFL this week. I think he's back to fitness. No, he's out. Yeah, he's um, he, he's in the VFL team, I believe. Yeah. So those will come out. I think the VFL team gets announced tomorrow afternoon. I'm not sure about that. But I think Cunners and Paddy Dow will both play in the VFL. And that's good to see. I think Paddy Dow, go in, son. Go get yourself 20, 25 touches. Go back in the midfield. Go have a run around. Um, you know, no cameras, no lights, no crazy supporters calling you, calling you a dud. Just go and enjoy your footy. Um, get some confidence and come back in the team. Um, it's just part of the growth. You have a look at, I mean, the article that came out this week from about Samo, just talking about how he's developed and the reaction that I got from from the video about how he's just starting to slowly find that consistency takes time. I mean, we're, I, I know that we're impatient, but slowly but surely, the Samos, the Fishers, 
the Cunninghams are starting to play some consistent footy. They're not dominating games completely yet. Um, but yeah, it just shows the time that we need to, to give these guys. And Paddy Dow, I think, falls into that exact category. So yeah, happy to see him down there. Uh, will you two be back next year? I hope. We ain't going anywhere, mate. <laughs> we ain't going anywhere. Uh, the show rolls on. Uh, this is us until until uh, until we're gone, until we're dead. Um, <laughs> we've, got multiple, we've got multiple premierships to uh, to enjoy together as a community before the, they shut us down here. Stav, hello, mate. SPS playing in the forward pocket. Uh, I'm not sure where he's named, but I quite liked him cross half back last week. I wouldn't mind seeing. Wouldn't mind seeing him uh, continue on with that. I think there's a little bit of a gaping hole that will emerge eventually when Simo and Nick, uh, not Nick Newman, and Daisy Thomas eventually come out of their, um, you know, out of their careers. So um, yeah, I, I, that's what I would like to see um, there. Judy, hello, the Carlton Show podcast. Andy Ma, Bagsy, and Gex, great guys. Unfortunately, um, Bagsy wasn't there this week. Um, he's, 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 he's just, he, he just embodies the spirit on the inside of all of us. Uh, I really enjoy listening to him go at it. Um, just entering another one. I've got Heath Black, mate. <laughs> How you going, guys? Very hey, well, mate. mate. Very, very well. Good to have you, uh, making your debut here. What's happening in your world? I'm just uh, having a listen to you, two fine young men going about your business. Unbelievable. Brilliant, guys. You're, uh, you're just turning this uh, this whole thing on its head at the moment. I'm just uh, rap for you. Is, uh, great insight. Um, what you're doing is just unbelievable. So keep it up, yeah? I appreciate it, mate. And um, you're you're uh, always, always welcome to contribute everyone's always welcome to contribute um, we love sharing your stuff on the page as well and again if anyone if anyone hasn't yet go right now on YouTube and uh, look up my blue heaven Heath Buck is a fantastic work Heath, may, Heath maybe you want to give us a bit of a um, context to my blue heaven and 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 your journey as a Carlton man for those who haven't seen you yet um yeah look I'm getting a bit of feedback. I'm getting a little bit of, I don't know what's happening here, but I'm getting a little bit of feedback, a few bit of noise coming through. But um, yeah, I've obviously followed the club since I was uh, since I was a kid. Uh, grew up a Carlton supporter. Uh, spent every second Saturday on the terraces of Princess Park in the 1970s and 1980s. And um, was lucky enough to spend a bit of time in the Carlton under-19s back in the, the late 1980s. And then... Uh, Got my marching orders and delisted from the footy club, which never really hurt me that much. But yeah, just love the club and, and lucky to be involved in the media at the moment um, with K Rock, uh, a radio station in Geelong, and just decided to uh, do a little bit of Carlton content at the back end of last year when the old man passed away. Yeah, no, nah, good on you, mate. We, we love it. And as I said before, I'm not sure if you were on the stream before, but it's that industry, I guess, insight both as a player and um, obviously in the media as well, but, you know, it just, it just shows, it just shows, you know, you're talking about um, you have a, a different angle uh, to what we do. We're just the, the casual fan, so to speak. Um, so keep up the good work. Um, mate, tell us about the game this week. What do you... What oh, do you just quickly, I've got to get going, but look, can I just encourage all Carlton supporters to get there on the weekend? I, I, yeah. I went to the Carlton Adelaide game last year at the Adelaide Oval. And there's no more intimidating place and then the Adelaide Oval, if you're a, an opposition supporter. I can only imagine what it would be like to be a player um, out on the ground where you've got, you know, 60 or well, 50 odd thousand opposition supporters just screaming their lungs out for the team. And it was a very intimidating place. We need to make the MCG on Saturday such a, such a fortress to us. Um, so if we can get anywhere between 50 and 60,000 there on a Saturday afternoon, two o'clock starting time, perfect. It's going to be pretty good weather. It's just going to make it a hell of a lot more difficult for Adelaide to come over here and get the four points. Uh, I just said, I don't know about you, Terry, but I, I can just feel that us supporters we've been um, we've been in hibernation for such a long time now, and this is like this this inner sort of anger. This this, this wants to come out, and um, I just get there on the weekend. Yeah, I think we're a huge chance. 
Um, I, I actually mentioned in my um, on my blue heaven that I thought Cruz would probably come out just because he looked so sore. Um, it's a bit of a worry because I think the young guy from Adelaide is a really good prospect and he's giving him a lot of drive. But I think I think we can beat him up around the footy. Um, and with bets out, there's a lot going on it on at Adelaide at the moment. It's a massive opportunity for us to make a statement against them. And there's a lot riding on this game. So every Carlton supporter, every Carlton supporter, get there this Saturday afternoon because um, we're a huge chance and just make life hell for Adelaide. We just need to do it for our footy club. Oh, very well said. You've had, I've got goosebumps thinking about it. I've been, <laughs> I've been giddy all week, mate. This is um, – I don't like building a game up too much and I know you want to never get too high, never get too low, but – you're right. There's a there's a there's a raging animal on the inside that's <laughs> waiting to be unleashed, and it all it's going to take is a like a, a Josh DeLuca tackle, a rundown tackle, um, holding the ball fourth quarter. And I just think I really think that um, we, we as supporters we can erupt it. I think last week we really needed to consolidate in front of the home fans when we were the favourite, and we did that. Um, this week, we, if we can just go to one more level. Uh, I think there's going to be a, a coliseum like roar from the crowd. And just one more quick one, mate, before I get going. But uh, young Josh DeLuca, I know Pommy there is a massive rap for him. Um, put him on Rory Laird this weekend, mate. Just put him on Rory Laird and make life absolute hell for Rory Laird. He loves to get around the back. He's a very good footballer, don't get me wrong. Um, but it's a perfect opportunity for, for Josh DeLuca to do what he does really well, and that's play with absolute passion, aggression. Um, I don't know whether he's got the tank, the, the tank to go with Laird for the full four quarters, but early in the game, if you can just put him off his uh, put him off his focus, because like Tom Atkins did it against him um, a few weeks back down at GMHBA Stadium. Atkins didn't get much of the ball himself, but he played on Rory Laird and took him right out of the game. Uh, he had no influence on it at all, and it was just a great effort by young Tom Atkins from Geelong. Um, and I think Josh DeLuca could play that role, and that could that could go a long way for us to win the game. Absolutely. I'll let you go, guys. I'll see you soon. Thanks for coming on, Heath. Really appreciate it, mate. Good on you, mate. Good on you, buddy. Dan, what do you think, mate? Oh, I was a little bit starstruck. Uh, I, well, I don't know. <laughs> But I've been excited. Yeah, man. Um, I've been watching Heath videos for. Um, yeah, hang on. I've, I've been watching Heath's videos since he began, and I was, you know, when I started doing a bit of content, it was always, you know, drawing a little bit of inspiration from Heath. So to have him on here, mate, it's got me a little bit giddy. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, you think about uh, the Rory Laird matchup? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago when we played Sydney that when you watch West Coast, they quite often use Hutchins on the halfback flanker. They've done it a couple of times this year and use like a halfback tagger. I'd love to see that from Carlton because I keep saying very quick, one of the fastest transition insides in the comp Adelaide. And if you watch the Essendon game, they killed Essendon just with the turnover and transition. It's so quick. So DeLuca, I think, get him to put him into the stands a couple of times. Rory Laird will shut up a bit. Yep. Fiona Maloney, been a Carlton supporter since I moved from England 30 years ago. Go Blues. I'll be there on Saturday. Good on you, Fiona. Like I said, Lua Broad, we are a global, global brand. Um, and I love, palms. I love seeing that. Peter Vlahos, this is the granny without a parade. Absolutely. Kano, same here. Goosebumps from that speech from Heath. Yeah, he sure knows how to um, sure knows how to speak very well. Christopher Broberg. Let's see heaps of Carlton supporters there barracking and shouting as uh, I'll hopefully be barracking and shouting from my lounge room watching it on the, te on the telly. Love it. Again, repeating that. And I think I could be wrong in this, but I think we need – 600 or so more members to crack 64, 63,000, something like that. So come on, get there, get your three-game membership. Every game for the rest of the season is um, is in Melbourne apart from the last game in Geelong. Um, so get there, bring the noise, 
you know, you, the, the one thing we can now rely on with our team is that we're not a basket case. Um, we're actually going to be competitive and uh, it's good to see. So get there. The boys will, you know, crack in and, and it'll, be, it'll be a good contest. Hata, are you living back in Melbourne? I am. I am definitely living back in Melbourne. Jazza, Walker still 50-50 to play. Uh, I kind of want him to play. I want to beat him at their best. Um, I know even if he plays, I mean, we've got Jonesy, we've got Weedering. Who would you give as a first crack to, to Tex, Dan? Uh, Weeters. I'd, I'd get Weeters there and keep Jones in that free-floating role. He did so well last week. Yep. Is that um, is that because you just think Jones is just a lot more of a, an attacking, flying type defender, and that probably that's what we want to utilise? When I see Jones being uh, given the, kind of the to play. job of sticking on a player, I, I kind of panic when that happens because mm-hmm. he's better at playing loose and just attacking the ball. I think Wheatering does a really good job of locking down his man. Yep. No, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. What about when um, What about when Doc comes back? How do you see that playing out? It's a tough one because traditional position, we've got a lot of small defenders now so who are making a name for themselves. Marchbank, Plowman, he, he's doing well, Newman. You've got a – so everyone's really performing. But I do think, like, I'd like to see Doc play in the back pocket and be really given that job of being the – control the, the the kind of defensive captain holding them all together just playing behind Newman I'd like to see that yep yep fair enough fair enough Lockie Tex should play so Jones has a launch pad to get up on I tell you what it's a good point Jonesy's got to take mark of the year soon he 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 hasn't quite done it yet he's got the leap he's got the explosiveness um I'm look Tell you what could be this week. I just, I just, there's, there's a final type intensity to this week. There just, there really is. I would say that if anyone's out there likes a bet, I think top better do it over and unders on players' marks. I'd like to take see what the odds are on Jones getting ten marks because they pepper it in, they bomb it into the fifty, and I can see Jones getting a lot of marks down back. Yeah, just cleaning up down there. You think? Yeah, because they just they just bomb it in. That's their they've got Brendan Bolton's panic button tactic of just knock it in at all costs. Yep. So Jones could get about 10, 15 marks. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, all right. Any last thoughts, Dan, or anyone in the audience? Any last questions you wanna get out there before we uh, before we wrap it up and uh, just to let you all know we've got a bunch of videos that Dan and I will record tomorrow. Uh, which is very exciting. So we'll have plenty of content. Hopefully, hopefully we get up on the weekend and there'll just be smiles and and positivity and electricity all around. Um, looking forward to that. Dan, any comments from you? Yeah, I suppose we're going to have to really think about who comes into the team against West Coast. Now we're guaranteed to win tomorrow, Saturday. <laughs> is it West Coast next week? It's West Coast the week after. Yeah. Tell you what, I don't know. We'll, um, we'll see. Hey, what well, if, we, if we win this? God, we'll beat West Coast, St Kilda, Geelong. Yeah, mate. Um, I'm just, you know, just trying to trying to keep a lid on it. It's very difficult. It's very difficult too. But I just can't help but think of this time next year. Um, oh, my lid came off yesterday when I worked out there's a chance we get Stephen Canelio. So. My lid's well and truly popped off. Yep, yep, absolutely. Hata, who do you think we will see the year before the year is out? Uh, I think you're talking about a new player. I'm not sure. Maybe confirm that. Um, Mehmet, honest opinion on Plowman. Let's hope he takes Lockie Murphy to the cleaners. Uh, I think Lockie Plowman has actually is actually improved this year from the beginning. Uh, I really do, and and um, this is coming from someone who was a real, real critic of Lockie Plowman. I thought his attack on the footy was just not quite um, where I wanted it to be, and where I knew he could 
have it. And I just think he's been a lot better the last few weeks. I've noticed him really intercepting marks and taking marks in front of his opponent, particularly in the last few weeks. So good on him. And that's all we ask. Show improvement. Dan, what do you think? Oh, the game he had on Walters a couple of weeks back, probably my favourite game this year from any Carlton player. Like, I, I enjoy that so much because no one gave him a chance. The press, Carlton fans, everyone was on his case. And tell you what, when he got home, he kissed his wife, took his car keys out and also took out Michael Walters out of his back pocket. Love it. Love it. Hata, yeah, like Ben Silvani. Okay, so do I think do we think there'll be any new debutants? Um I think maybe Owies could sneak a game. Maybe. Um maybe we can maybe we can sneak him a game. T D well TDK is not a debutant. Um I'm trying to think. No, I don't is there anyone else down there? Is Shoemaker? Shoemaker. Yeah, Shoemaker. Shoemaker. Shoemaker will see him before the end of the year. Okay, yep. So that's that. Benji Lid, I think it's called Carlton Arrogance. Haha, <laughs> I've missed it. Yeah. Yeah, you wait. I've told everyone. Everyone's kind of like, everyone's, I've just told everyone, like, expect to hate me because when we're up and about, I mean, everyone hears from me as it is and we're not even that good. Wait until, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait until we're actually dominating. Um, oh, mate, you won't be able to control me. Oh, I, I printed out my new profile picture of Erst and um, Coggy, and he's actually on my desk now, my work desk. I've got a printed picture of Coggy in a frame. Yep. That, that's how much I'm up and about. <laughs> Robert Winston, love the passion, guys. Let me know if your boys want to come to a, to a Tigers game. I'll look after you boys. Best seats in the house. Sorry, mate, we're too busy uh, building up to Premiership number 17 over here. <laughs> No, no. Um, um, one, because that'll be Coggy's debut. Coggy's debut, absolutely, mate. We come round one next year, watch Coggy have 35 and three goals. No, uh, Rob, love your work. For those of you who don't know Rob Winston, he runs Winston Sports Media. Go and check him out on, on Facebook. He does a lot of um, local footy, a lot of community footy. Uh, he's also starting to branch out with a new podcast called Road to September, which uh, where he interviews uh, some quite prominent people. He's done an episode with Warwick Kappa. Um, I may or may not be one of those prominent people making an appearance in a couple of weeks. Uh, I don't know if I've got the same reputation of Warwick Kappa in the game, but nevertheless, I will be uh, doing a little do a little thing with Rob in a couple of weeks when we play the Tigers. So uh, make sure you go and check that out. Winston Sports Media. James Marshall, huge outs for Adelaide, Betts and Greenwood. Yeah, massive outs. Massive outs works for us. Well, I know that we're missing Cruiser, but, you know, they're missing their, their freak small forward and Greenwood's a nice little um, cog for them. That's interesting too. I just realised Gibbs still can't get a game knowing that Greenwood's out, um, still not the next cab off the rank. And I kind of like it. I don't I don't want to play against him. I, I don't have any bad blood for Gibbs. So, yeah. Well, there's rumours going around Twitter and certain Facebook groups that Gibbs has been offered a contract with us. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just think about it. If you're Adelaide, if you're if you're the Adelaide Football Club, if you're a, an elite professional sporting organisation, and you go to all this length to go and get this player, you want the sec. You know, you're, you're forced to wait a year. You're forced to give up a second round pick. Um, you end up doing it they're not getting him back they're gonna wait it out i feel like they'll put a pre-season into him starting to feel like don pike is under a bit of pressure i don't know why i know it might be a little naive because i don't follow that later i don't watch them but i just i get the the vibe just reading the forums that i, I did this week you know in adelaide forums that there's just a little bit of angst towards him and he could be a little stubborn and i don't know do, do you feel like Pikey could be under pressure. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean that that's a club that needs to be in and around the eight. M massive expectations at the Crows, and if you look at the way they've behaved all year, particularly them saying, "Oh, when Carlton made the phone call about the draft pick, we couldn't believe how lucky we were." We they've been really arrogant all year, and the wheels are starting to come off. So. 
I could see Pike being moved on at the end of the year. If they don't make the eight, I could see it. Yep. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. That'll do us for today. Again, an hour just goes by so quickly. Um, but that's how it is when you're a Carlton fan and you love the Blues. Thank you all very much for your support. Um, we'll definitely be doing some more of the interviews after the game this week. I'll have more details about that later uh, in the week tomorrow or Saturday morning. As always, go the Mighty Blue Boys. Dan, thank you for your thank you for your um, your appearance. Heath, thank you. Kano, thank you, and thank you everyone for tuning in. See you next week or see you on Saturday.